about a video that I did about six months ago called Seven Ways to Network Better. So I looked at the video. It's doing pretty well. Check it out on YouTube, Valuetainment Economics, Seven Ways to Network Better. I wanted to bring up some of the key points, get your guys' perspective, and see if it still ranks true six months later. Why would it not? But again, six months ago, there weren't in-person meetings. Right. So can we do this quick rundown real quick? Let's what are your thoughts, Marcelo? Oh, there it is. Already implementing That it. makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> Go for it. So number one, of the seven ways to network better, there's a lot of don'ts in here, things to don't do. Number one was don't show up blind. What does that mean? A lot of these meetings or conferences will have an agenda or a pre-attendee list is what it's called. Basically, who's going to be registered to show up? Who's going to be there? And the number one thing that you should understand is from that list, I have to meet these three people. There's going to be a thousand people at these conference. These are my main targets to meet. Right. A lot of these conferences, some day, sometimes it's one day, sometimes it's three days. Very rarely is it longer than that. But there's going to be a, a thousand people there. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Make a list of who you want to see and meet those people. So that's number one. Don't show up blind. Now, if there's no attendee list, maybe that means showing up and seeing what's the schedule looking like. Because sometimes you can just show up like, I don't know what's going on. You're just kind of lost at these meetings or these conferences. But you can show up, go on the website, go on the app, and say, all right, this is the schedule. This is going to be there. Go in with a game plan. As always, a game plan is always a good thing. That's number one. I also think that these are seven things that not only help you network better, but just help you have better relationships in general. Like, I think, like, no matter what you're doing, whether because maybe not a lot of people are going to networking events, mm -hmm. but they're going anywhere. They're going to a job interview. They're going to a business meeting. They're going to, you know, meet somebody that could potentially give them a job in the future. Like, all these things ring true for anything yes. you're pulling up to. You brought up a good point. Not a lot of people go to networking events. Right. And my response to that is, why not? No matter what field you're in, you could still go to networking events, business meetings, conferences. Come to the vault. It's your give a shit level. How much do I actually give a shit the about The give this? a shit level. What story was that? Uh, we talked about that. What's your did. give a shit level? I think two weeks ago. Oh, ways to become a top performer. Yes. Here, yeah. Do you give a shit? That's yeah. probably the most important. Man, I don't give a shit. All right. Yeah. Well, clearly you're not going to perform well thank you david you're on point that coffee number two don't show up late okay this ain't a party all right it's it, sometimes it's cool the party starts at nine you stroll in at 9 45 10 you got you know you're with a couple friends you show up late that's kind of cool fashionably late you know party starts at nine you're there at 8 45 it's like dude like how eager are you to be here it's kind of how we roll with this podcast fashionably late. <laughs> fashionably late exactly but to these conferences especially if it's the conferences from Noon to five o'clock today. Get your ass there at noon. Right. Like, don't be late. Don't show up fashion late to a business conference. It's like a business meeting. If you have a business meeting, you show up on time. There's nothing fashionable about being late to business. Not late to business. Zero. What are your thoughts, Marcelo? Don't be late, dude. Uh, what is it? Um, there's there's a weird feeling you get when you are late. Like you just feel inferior. Like you walk in there and everybody's there earlier than you and they look at you, they look down on you, right? It's like this energy. It's like, oh, this poor, look at this poor kid. You always make all the noise. Like, where can I sit? He doesn't have his life oh, together. Where, where, where Don't can I sit? sit? Excuse me, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Keep going, keep going. Check into the hotel. It's not a good that's where you, that's yeah. where you start to throw excuses. It's just, it looks weak upon you. Let me tell you something. And I am someone who is notorious for running a little bit of late. We run five minutes late for this podcast today. For business meetings, I show up, again, I was in Orlando for yeah. three days. The conference started Monday. When did I show up? Sunday night. Checked in the hotel. Ready to go. Just a little perspective yeah. for you. By the way, guys. Just a little perspective. To the people watching, we are ready at 4 p.m. We're all sitting, and we all decide to be a little late. Just for just the to, sake of fashion. Oh, well, kinda, just make them wait. Fashionably late. Thank you, David, for that. Go ahead. Number three, don't be sloppy. Mm. This, to me, Girl. I don't know if it's the most important, but it's high up there. I just came from this meeting. And there was a group of men speaking mm. uh, with a uh, with another man, Ugh. and th the man was giving the presentation. And the other group of men, I know that they were thinking the whole time, "Dude, you got to lose like a hundred pounds." <laughs> the guy was five hundred pounds, sloppy. He was a mess. Mm. But not only was he physically, his shirt was untucked, just didn't look good. I told the story about this. Some guy showed up in a meeting. I swear to God on my life, 
with about a pound of ear hair coming out of his ear. Like, <laughs> did you not look in the mirror, Sergey? Sergey. It, it, come correct. Look right. in the mirror. Yeah, because you can. I be, don't care if you're in shape, out of shape. You could still look good. That's what I was gonna say. You can be a cleaned up fat guy. Exactly. You can totally be. We have friends here that are cleaned up fat guys. Name they one. look good. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Marcelo, I know you're a fashionable guy. You don't show up too fashionably late. You're not sloppy. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, as you know, my mom would say, "Represent the family." Ooh. So represent your family. Don't embarrass the family. You go out don't there. You and embarrass me out don't there, Marcelo. Don't embarrass me. So don't embarrass yourself. I think it, it, there's a big, especially nowadays, dude. You gotta smell good. You gotta like. There's no excuse, bro. Mm -hmm. There's so many products you can use. You gotta smell good. You gotta look decent. It all goes back to your, your give a shit level. Give I'm a sure shit you level. Actually, give a shit about how you're viewed. Don't be sloppy. Dude. Now, number four is something that I know for a fact, David, Marcelo, myself, do not have a problem with. Number four is don't be shy. Uh -huh. Don't be shy. Introduce yourself. Give a firm handshake. Say what's up. Crack a joke if you need to, to ingratiate the audience a little bit. Be memorable. Nobody likes a wallflower. Unless you're like the smartest guy in the room and it's like, all right, just give him the reports. We'll deal with it later. But don't be shy. At a networking event, don't be shy. Yeah, that's the whole point of the networking yes. event is to uh, network. Like yeah, right. if you go there and you're shy and you're, it's a two-day conference and you spend 48 hours there and you meet zero people and you got zero business cards. If you transacted zero business because you were afraid to get out of your comfort zone, a.k.a. your comfort zone will kill you, you're dead in business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't be shy. A hundred percent. I agree. Thank you, sir. You're not a shy guy. Were you ever shy? Um, I am a little bit shy in the inside, definitely. I don't like really? Yeah, I always get nervous when I have to talk to people. But I have found that if you are shy, that moment when like you break out, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Like you yeah. kind of it's a it's a good moment. Also, people people like it when you take your opportunities. Like if you think about it, all these rappers, all these hustlers, like they freestyle in front of the guy when he's walking to his car. There was a guy that freestyled in front of Drake, mm -hmm. like on that while Drake was getting into his car and yeah. he got to know him. Like there's a lot of moments like that in history that you're like, dude, I just gotta do you just gotta do it. Yeah, because worst case scenario, Drake just drives away. Best case scenario, he's like, Yo, that was sick. Uh here's exactly. my whatever. Right. So, so there's being a lot shy, of risk reward. I'm an, of being I'm shy. an extrovert. You're an extrovert. You, I would say, are an extrovert with some tendencies to be shy is what you're saying. Sure. So, you know, half of people are extroverts, half of them are introverts. So here's my advice to the introverts out there, because the extroverts, they're going to be okay. Introverts. Okay. Take a deep breath. I know you're scared. I know it's not what you want to do, but think of the big picture. Is it better for you to get out there, shake some hands, you know, make your rounds at these meetings and get some business done? Or is it easier for your ego and for your comfort level to be shy and not really for, you know, meet people? Right. I think you know the answer to that. So sometimes introverts can, you know, have very productive careers in what they do. Right. But sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone will kill you. So that's advice to the introverts out and there. And maybe even plan it. Whenever I'm really nervous, whenever I'm feeling shy and I have to talk to somebody that I think is kind of out of my league, I plan something to say. I go, I'm going to bring this up. And then that's then okay. I'm gonna be safe. Go in with a game plan. Go in with a game Don't plan. Don't show up Don't blind. Go blind. Boom. Boom. David, that cup of coffee is waking you up. I love it. Number <laughs> five. This is for the selfish people out there. This is for the people that want to make it all about themselves. Mm. Number five. Don't make it all about you. I, At a networking funny. meeting, you're there to meet people to hear their story. Right. You're not there to tell your story to everybody. Okay, make it about them. We always talk about this. The best sales thing you could do, not telling. Selling isn't telling. Selling is asking. Yeah. Ask questions. And you know what you do after you ask the question? Shut the... And listen. Listen to their answer. Okay, that makes sense now. I was wondering, well, well you said... You, sa you said... That, that's very... You said that you didn't want to spend that on this. So here's my suggestion. You had mentioned that, oh, this guy is actually listening. Holy moly. So don't make it about you. Marcelo, I don't want to make this about me. I don't want to make this a, I want to make this about you. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I think it makes sense. You notice a theme here. It makes sense. <laughs> People like to talk about themselves. It totally makes sense. If you're ever talking about somebody that's bigger than you or they're, you know, in a in a higher place 
and you know, if you just talk about yourself the whole time, they're like, mm, this isn't that interesting. I'm actually doing really interesting things. Maybe you should ask about me. Or it's like if someone who says, if uh, I met Shaq tomorrow, yeah. I probably wouldn't tell him about me too much. <laughs> I probably would ask yeah. him some questions about him. Well played. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's a great approach to meeting anyone. I mean, that's what I do is I just ask. I, like what right. you said is 100% true. You just ask because... Who doesn't like talking about themselves, right? They they want to talk. You just allow that. Of course. That. And then you become more of a mystery because they know everything about me. I know nothing about that. And then they ask you, and now you're in a conversation. Now you're in a conversation, yeah. and you both care. So a part of that, you ever dealt with this person who's like the one upper? Yeah, yeah. so David, I just got back from New York. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm from New York. Yeah. Where were you? Oh, I was in the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. I, what, did you? Like, it's like, dude, I'm telling you my story here. I don't need you to one up. Right. I went to the heat game. I was at the heat game too. Thanks, bro. Telling my start of the story here. So don't make it about you. <laughs> I, I played for the heat. I played for the heat. <laughs> heat player slept on my couch. <laughs> um, number six, don't be an amateur. This is an amateur hour over here. Even if you've been there for a week or a month or it's your first year in the business, act like you know what you're doing, okay? Know your stuff. At the very least, have an elevator pitch. You know how we said... Don't make oh, it about yeah. you in number five. Yeah. Number six, make it about you that at least you know your stuff in this regard. Oh, Elevator yeah. pitch. Tell me what you do in like 30 seconds or less. Boom, spit it out. Yeah. Or, Not- or whatever the most interesting thing about you is. Like you got to have that on hand. Like whenever you meet people, you got to be like, all right, this is what's going to be interesting to you. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure when you talk to somebody, they go, oh, what do you do, Sosnick? You go, oh, I do this podcast. I also work in insurance. I do this and I do that. You have to have a quick way to say quick. what you do because you're not going to be able to talk for a long time and then have them stay in it. You got to have what you do. What do you do? You got to have a question. For, you got to have an you answer. You got to have an answer for that. You got to be a hook, too. Got to be a hook. Listen to your corner and watch out for the hook. Number seven, don't blow it in the end. What does that mean? You know how we talked about don't be late? Mm-hmm. This is kind of the this is kind of like the antithesis of that is stay late. You're at a business conference, okay? The ah, conference ends saying. at five. Don't cut out at 4.30. Mm. Stay late. Mm. What I love doing is doing a final lap. Love doing a final lap. Anywhere. Parties. Anywhere. Always. Parties. Final lap. Mm-hmm. I get an Irish goodbye. Some people want to do that. Before the Irish goodbye, do a final lap. Mm-hmm. Is there someone I can meet? Is there something I could do? Is there some person that I somehow missed? Um, very important to do. 100%. The guard goes down. Once the party's kind of dwindling, everybody's guard comes down. You know what I mean? You go to the host of the party. Yeah. Hey, man, great party. And they go, you know what? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, hey by I'm the way, we're- I'm just about to head out, but I just want to- uh, Or I- not even that. They go, you know what? We're actually going to head to this after party. Exactly. Or we're going to- Or you know what? Uh, me and my wife, we've been dying to you know, talk to you about this. Or me and my girl, we've been dying- <laughs> like, I'm telling you, a lot you know? of times it happens. Yeah. You stay a little bit late. I would stay late at comedy shows all the time. All the time. And that's how, at the end of the comedy show, once everybody leaves and you're hanging out with the producer, he goes, hey, man, do you want to do the show sometime? Bingo. Do you want to go? Do you want to come on next week? It's like those. Also, do you know why staying late works? Mm-hmm. Shows you care. You never yeah. stay late at something you don't care about. The give a fuck level. The, the give, give a, a fuck, fuck level. level. Just through the roof if you stay late. Yeah. Anyway, those are seven things that you can do better to network better. In person, meetings are back. It's official without a whistle. And this is actually happening. So hopefully you take something from this. For me, don't be, sh- don't be sloppy. Don't be shy. Don't make it about yourself. Know your shit. Mm. 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 We all owned it up. Mm. Um, Here's the final takeaway. Those are the seven things. So, like we said on the video, networking is where the conversation begins, not where it ends. So, after the networking event, there's two words that you have to do. Follow up. Follow up. You can get all, you can have the best meeting in the world, have a great time, make all these contacts, and then you don't follow up with any of them. How the hell's business going to get done? Right. What's the, it's, everyone gives business cards these days. Obviously, or people these days will take a picture on the phone and you know, all that f- fancy stuff. Follow up. Great book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You got to care about people. You know, they always say, no matter what business you're in, you're in the people business. Yeah, you and are. these are seven ways to get better with your people. You know, they always say, Marcelo, your network is your net worth. If you add up the five people you associate with the most, that's who you are. So who you rolling with? Always talk is money. Always talk is money. If you enjoyed that short clip from the Sawscast, click here to watch another. Click here to watch the full episode, or just stay broke.